Do you know why you should never put a tall fence around your house? Do you know what kind of meat you should never eat in a crisis? Do you know why you should never hide your stockpile in the basement? And that doing that almost guarantees that you'll lose all your food, your ammo, or your gold and silver in times of social chaos. These are just some of the innocent mistakes that can cost you the life of someone you love. If you rely on a few very common yet criminally ineffective home defense techniques to protect your family and your stockpile in a mass social and economic collapse, but the techniques that actually work are so counterintuitive they will shock you as they shocked me even though I've been a US Army officer for almost 22 years my name is Steve Walker and in this short webinar I will explain why mainstream home defense strategies flat out don't work and why relying on them actually paints a big bullseye on your home leaving you and your family vulnerable defenseless and exposed against the savage scum that will rise with the coming crisis I'll share with you the story of the two preppers that tested their home defense strategies in real social chaos. One lived to tell the tale. Despite being crippled with arthritis and not having any money to spend on a conventional survival gear, while the rich, overconfident prepper was a lot less fortunate. What's more, if you stick until the very end of this presentation, I'll give you a few simple, tested tactics that are proven to protect your home, your family, and your life in times of social breakdown when vicious gangs are beating defenseless old people inside their own homes and when there's no 911 to call and no police to come to your help and even though this might sound impossible now I'll show you how to turn the most vulnerable house into an impenetrable home that deters criminals and thugs no matter if your budget is so low you can barely afford to buy food let alone home security gadgets no matter if you've got less than an hour a day to put into prepping and even if right now you don't even know where to start when it comes to making your home more secure you'll finally be able to enjoy a deep relaxing sleep without jumping from your bed every time you hear a strange noise in the middle of the night and in a crisis your family will get peace of mind knowing that rioting mobs can't enter your home even if blood is running in the streets and it looks like all-out civil war because the techniques I'm about to expose don't come from books they're taken from actual 21st century war zones from lawless states where social chaos is the name of the game and where not having enough time or money to prepare doesn't stop real-world preppers from creating virtually impenetrable defenses for their families I have seen firsthand what it's like to be thrown out of your own home like some rag doll even when you thought you had all your corners covered I was in another country when the unthinkable happened and witnessed what looked like the rehearsal for what will come to America in the near future it was January 23, 2011, when I landed in Cairo, Egypt, to visit my sister Hannah, who was studying archaeology there. I made it over to her house, in a quiet neighborhood, not different from my own neighborhood. But just two days later, protesters began pouring into the streets of Cairo. These were the early days of the Arab Spring, and the people were determined to bring down the 30-year-old Mubarak regime. Hannah and I watched from behind the curtains of her window as the number of people in the streets began to swell. For the first few days, we almost felt as if the events were exciting, that it was cool to be a part of something historical. Yet, in a matter of a few hours, things changed from exciting to disturbing to downright scary. And then it happened, the most sickening preparedness lesson of my entire life. On January 28th, the president dissolved his government and attempted to shut down the Internet across Egypt. What followed was utter pandemonium, as violent mobs of looters gradually took over the capital. Power outages crippled many neighborhoods, including my sisters. Hundreds of thousands of people swarmed into the streets of Cairo, and with no police in sight, calm almost instantly turned to chaos. We could hear gunshots outside and the roaring riots in the streets. That same night, while the mobs were going mad outside, we heard a frantic knocking on Hannah's door. It was Amir, her neighbor. Come to my house now. I have plenty of food, water, and ammo, he said. It didn't take much convincing for us to follow him. Amir was a well-off Egyptian, and his house looked incredibly secure. A ten-foot wall surrounded his compound, and sure enough, he had a safe room stocked to the brim with food and water. He carried a nine-millimeter with him at all times, but would play off and say he'd never need to use it. It struck me that Amir was like many American preppers. He had spent a small fortune to fortify his home. With our flights canceled, we were stuck at his place. But for the first time in days, we actually felt safe. We didn't know yet just how horribly wrong we were. Outside of our walls, rioters were starting to get desperate. It was their second day without food, as trucks had stopped supplying the grocery stores, and everything had already been looted. 
The tension was so thick that we could feel it in our bones. There had been reports of gang rapes and random killings. We knew something bad was about to happen. One Sunday morning, Amir went outside to cook a small quartered lamb. With electricity out for days, the ice in his cooler had melted, and he didn't want the meat to spoil. We joined him in his courtyard, salivating at the smell coming off his fire pit. But we weren't the only ones. As the scent wafted into the air, we heard frantic shouting from directly outside the house. Suddenly, a man pulled himself over Amir's wall. Then, more figures came over the wall. A whole flood of protesters descended into the compound. Amir screamed for us to come with him into his basement. Anna and I started to follow, but I stopped her. My years of military training told me this was not right. So instead, I led her to the rear of the house. From a dark corner, terrified for our lives, we saw a horde of figures fighting one another like hungry werewolves over the small hunk of lamb. Dozens of others swarmed into the house. They emerged a moment later, dragging Amir as he screamed and begged. His pleas did nothing. They unlatched his entry door and threw him down on the ground. He reached for his pistol, but it was hopeless. At the sight of Amir going for his gun, the crowd began to stomp on his face, and one man grabbed a crude plank of wood and beat him mercilessly with it. Blood ran out into the streets, and soon Amir stopped making any sounds at all. That moment I felt helpless, ashamed that I couldn't do anything to save my friend's life, and fearful that we might be the next on the list. But God had a different plan, and that's how I came to discover the survival tactics that not only saved us, but might save you and your family when a similar scenario hits the USA. But first, let me give you the three lessons that I learned from Amir's horrific murder. Pay attention, because knowing just one of these could save the lives of those you love when disaster strikes. Lesson number one is, your real key to preventing invaders from getting into your home is not fences, walls, or protective barriers. In Amir's compound, I thought we were safe. But in a crisis situation where people are desperately looking for food and water, no one will think twice about breaking through your defenses. Even if the barriers around your perimeter seem dangerous, the idea of starving to death will scare intruders even more. There is, however, a type of barrier that deters looters, and it's not what you'd expect. But more about that in a moment. Next, here's lesson number two. Pay very, very close attention to the footprint you are leaving behind. Don't let it be known that you have food when others are going hungry. Amir didn't follow this rule, and he lost his life because of it. Lastly, lesson number three is never hide your sock pile in your basement. That's the first place looters and government officials will search and see whether you are hiding something important. When Amir ran to his basement, he was cornered. When the mob entered his home and found him hiding with a massive stockpile of food and water, they had no problem dragging him away. If you don't take anything else from this video, promise me that you will remember the three lessons mentioned above. I don't want the death of a good man to have been in vain. I want to make sure that people back home in the United States, true patriots who love this country, can take something from a tragic experience. Now, listen carefully, because my Egypt escape story can save your family's life in a crisis. As we stood there watching Amir's life drain out of him in front of our eyes, we knew there would be seconds until the killers would turn their attention to us. So we made our escape through a tiny doorway in the wall that led to a small back alley. We could hear screaming and gunshots coming from every direction. The smell of smoke was everywhere, stinging my nostrils. Then, through the haze, I saw the shadow of a shriveled old man waving to us. I didn't know it at that moment, but this old man would save both our lives and show me why everything that I and you have ever heard about home defense is deeply, terribly flawed. His name was Masood, and he lived two doors from Amir. He recognized Hannah and led us both to his house, but his place looked nothing like Amir's. There was no barrier, and there wasn't even a fence. Instead, we waded through rows of thorny bushes. He told us to walk directly behind him in a twisted path, or else we'd risk stepping on Keltros or other obstacles. The noise and dust faded away considerably as we approached the house. It was impossible not to compare Masood and Amir's defenses. Just like Amir, Masood was stockpiling enough food and water to last him a few months. But unlike his neighbor, this senior prepper thought brains were far more useful than having a big budget. I'd rather put my money in my stockpile than in gadgets, he said. But that didn't mean his house was vulnerable to looters. Quite the opposite. While Amir's walled-up home seemed safe, it actually screamed valuable things inside, especially during the chaos of a revolution. Yet Masood's house was low-key, with simple and effective perimeter defenses that were almost invisible to the untrained eye. 
What we saw inside the house was equally unconventional, yet more powerful than any type of traditional prepping I'd ever seen or learned about. He had no large stockpile of food and supplies in a basement, but several smaller stashes hidden throughout the house, sometimes behind concealed walls that he taught me how to make. It's much easier than you'd guess. We stayed with him in his small home for two weeks until the riots, looting, and mass violence subsided, and we could finally fly back to America. During those 14 days I spent with Masood, my eyes were opened to what really would need to be done in a crisis situation. He was able to leave his home and return without being harmed. He was able to eat and provide us with food when so many people were starving. To top it all off, he had spent virtually nothing on his defense system. He had no CCTV, no alarm system, no safe room, and almost none of the things rich preppers like to buy. Masood did everything differently, and I know that's why I'm still here on this planet, able to give you the life-saving information that I'm about to share. After the weeks of complete collapse I faced in Egypt, I know that Masood's true from the trenches methods of prepping are the only ones I'd ever use. His wisdom had passed the ultimate test. It had kept us alive when the odds were stacked against us. Many home defense tactics look good on paper but don't survive contact with the hard reality of a crisis. And even though everything Masood did seemed to fly in the face of conventional home defense wisdom, I'm certain that it is this lack of convention that kept us safe when others were murdered and could do the same for your family someday soon. As I was sitting in Masood's house with Hannah waiting for the nightmare outside to end, I couldn't help but think of America and how an economic meltdown can easily send us into deep social chaos. That's when conventional home defense methods will show their true face and their complete uselessness in keeping you and your family safe. Because when you think about it, it's hard enough to keep scumbags from entering your home even during peacetime. Like those robbers who broke into a Florida house, pistol whipped a grandmother and her daughter, placed duct tape over their mouths and over the mouth of an infant, and then took off with anything of value they could find. But this is nothing compared to what you can expect in a crisis. With millions of people out of work and relying on nothing but government handouts to feed their families, just imagine how it will look like when there's no police and no 911 to call. The L.A. riots or the Katrina lootings will look like a rehearsal, as armed parents will do anything to provide food for their kids in a crisis, even if it means going over your dead body. After I got home from Egypt, my life was just not the same anymore. Before the Cairo experience, I thought I had all the answers when it came to protecting my home and my family. But I was proven wrong. And if I was wrong about this, what else was I wrong about? And if just two weeks with Masood taught me so much about making my home more secure, what else could I learn if I just spent more time with real-life preppers from actual war zones? The thought wouldn't let me sleep at night, so I decided to do something radical. I had to know the answer to real, effective home defense, the kind that actually works during periods of mass social breakdown, during a crippling disaster or long economic crisis, not just for myself, but for the millions of Americans who have a false sense of confidence in their homes and who are exposing themselves and their families to unnecessary risks. My idea was simple. The USA is still far from becoming engulfed by civil war like Syria or Bosnia. That makes these strategies even more effective. Because when it hits the fan, when looters are having a good time like they did during the 2011 London riots, the best advice won't come from someone who spends their days eating caviar on the French Riviera. Just the opposite. It's the modern-day survivors, the Serbs, the Chechens, the Syrians, the Iraqis, that you can learn the most from, because they're actually using these strategies to stay alive. After Egypt, I wanted to discover more in the trenches' survival secrets and strategies. So, for two years, I traveled to the trenches, to Syria, Sudan, and the Congo. My friends and family thought I was crazy, but I didn't care. I was on a mission to find the answer to a simple question. How do the people in poor, war-stricken countries manage to keep their families and their stockpiles secure when it's impossible to invest thousands of dollars in home security? As I traveled, I saw how dozens of men in war-torn countries defend their homes, feed their families, ward off looters and rapists with only their words. Hundreds of preparedness strategies that my decades of army experience and book study never gave me. I discovered that the real-life tactics were a far cry from the conventional methods you can find in many preparedness books or websites. And if these modern preppers can survive in places like Sudan or in the Middle East, in a war zone where rape and plunder aren't mere blips on the radar, but a way of life, then you too can use these simple home defense techniques to harden your home and keep your family alive and well in a broken society where it's all about the survival of the fittest. And I realized that this is crucial information 
every American family must know. Because even when you're lucky to be left alive after your house gets broken into, robbers usually leave with more than just your valuables. They also take your peace of mind with them. For long years when the slightest sound will make you paranoid and afraid. That's why I gathered all this knowledge and compiled it into an unconventional and maybe even controversial program on how to turn your home into an impenetrable fortress without spending thousands of dollars. I call it Bulletproof Home Defense, and it's a complete blueprint for the complete beginner, as well as the seasoned prepper, to help you achieve bulletproof protection against looters and rapists, robbers and thieves, desperate mobs, or even armed paramilitary groups. And it's probably the only reliable resource for practical, real-life home defense strategies that are devastatingly effective compared to the hearsay and second-hand advice that plague many preparedness resources. The Bulletproof Home Defense Program gathers the collective knowledge of the ultra-preppers I met in my travels through countries devastated by war. These people are uniquely special. They're not the strong, badass type you see in Rambo movies, not the ultra-rich prepper from reality shows. They're simple people sometimes crippled with arthritis and with just enough money to barely go by but at the same time smart shrewd and wise enough to survive for months or even years in the world's deadliest places look there's big problems with conventional home defense methods and because of it your family is vulnerable and exposed and that problem is many preparedness authors are completely out of touch with reality you think you're getting advice from this guy when in reality you're getting advice from this guy most of the time, the author is sitting behind his computer at his fancy desk in downtown New York trying to imagine how the world would look like when it hits the fan. And he writes the common sense tactics that he thinks are most likely to work. This has the effectiveness of watching a zombie movie marathon and hoping to learn anything useful in a crisis. Real life doesn't work like this. In fact, the only thing you can expect in a civil unrest situation is that everything will be unexpected. You've got no electricity. You have to leave your home to get fresh water, and you have to keep a much lower profile than you would during peacetime. Conventional home defense techniques only work during peacetime against common thieves. That is, if they work at all. One thing is true, though. In a crisis, thieves will indeed be common, and so will looters out to steal your food or rapists looking for a little fun. And when there's no police to call and 911 is flooded with desperate calls, when law and order are replaced with chaos and desperation, that's when the common sense tactics need to be replaced by the wisdom of war zone preppers. Here's just a glimpse of what you'll find inside the Bulletproof Home Defense Program. On page 16, you'll find out what you must do to drive away a hungry mob, even when your family is out of ammo, and one of your family members rendered totally ineffective as a combatant. This is a real case study from the Argentina collapse. In that incident, one bullet actually drove away a gang of 16 people. Clement writes in and says, My biggest frustration with regards to preparing was finding ammo and reloading supplies. It's so tough to get ammo now. But after going through your program, I learned that you don't really need tens of thousands of rounds. You just need to know where to aim. The case study with the Argentinians was really eye-opening. On page 105, you'll learn how to magically install situational awareness of a veteran soldier inside you and sharpen your sight, smells, and hearing almost instantly so that no intruder can ever surprise you. Jacob writes, I used to be a Navy SEAL, and this is exactly how the trainees learn situational awareness. I'm impressed. Also on page 12, you'll finally crack the secret to persuading your spouse to take up prepping, even if they are calling you a crazy for now and how to prepare your home so that it is ready for a disaster without disrupting your everyday life. Dwight writes, my other half always thought of me as crazy. She was really bothered with all the money I'm spending to stock up guns and ammunition. After going through your program and implementing what you recommended, she is like a changed person. Now it feels like my wife and kids are even more excited about this than I am. And on page 35, you'll learn a protocol developed by an Israeli on how to make other people think you are out of food, even though you have a 10-year stockpile in your home. On page 45, you'll understand how a strange psychological trick used very commonly by the FBI to control the mind of any intruder and get him far, far away from your property and family. It sounds incredible, but this underground technique is so powerful, it has been banned in several countries. On page 44, you'll learn why security alarms are almost useless in a disaster scenario in keeping looters out. And the 50 cent silent alarm that works without electricity and doesn't alert the intruder. Sam says, I have never thought of it this way before. Cash is already tight, but I was almost going to buy a surveillance system next week for my home defense plan. After finding out this 50 cent alarm setup you're talking about, I'm slapping myself why I didn't think of this.
On page 42, you'll learn the secret to hiding your water storage tank. Most people think it's impossible to hide hundreds of gallons of fresh, life-saving water. But I'll prove it to you. It can be done cheaply and easily. Florence writes, you are a genius. I have never seen any information on hiding your water storage published elsewhere. On page 59, you'll discover three quick fixes to strengthen any structure, like your doors, that is more effective in keeping out intruders than a solid steel door. Craig says, I never thought of it this way. I was in the process of strengthening my home and found your program. Your method of strengthening doors only require a few dollars worth of parts from my local hardware store, and it only took five minutes. It's great. Keep up the good work. On page 68, you'll learn why you should never have a safe room, and why Russians call them convenient coffins. In the movies, they might sound good to have, but they are proven to be deadly in a real crisis situation. I'm also going to show you something that is much more safer and effective than a safe room. Plus, on page 37, you'll learn how to get even the rowdiest kids to maintain operation security. This is critical, because kids often misbehave. Often, they don't realize it themselves, and can thrust your entire family in danger by alerting enemies to your presence. Learning the techniques will get even the most disobedient kids to listen to your instructions. Claire says, I have two boys, one ten years old, the other nine. They used to not understand how serious preparing and maintaining OPSEC in a crisis scenario really is. After I showed them what you mentioned in the program, they started behaving like little military men that I can rely on. And there's more. If you try the Bulletproof Home Defense Program today, you're also getting four special reports that are essential for your survival during a social and economic breakdown. The first report is titled, Crash Proof, How to Survive an Economic Collapse, and it will be your Bible in the coming mass economic meltdown. Financial crises happen all the time, and millions of people in countries like Russia, South Korea, or Argentina saw their life savings wiped out in a matter of days, were foreclosed out of their homes, and forced to live in the streets with their families. Yet many others actually thrived during these periods, and they weren't bankers or politicians, but regular folks like you and me. If you're wondering what are the first things you should do in an economic collapse, then you've got to read this. Second, you'll also get a special report titled, Doctor in a Box, that will show you how to stay alive when there's no doctor in sight. This will come in handy when hospitals are closed or when there's severe damage to the grid that you can rely on yourself. This will not replace medical training, but it will show you how to legally stockpile prescription antibiotics, even when your pharmacist won't let you buy more than a month's supply. It shows you how to defend yourself against the cholera and dysentery that claim so many lives in a crisis, how to deal with fractures and respiratory infections, and what natural remedies work when the health system is down. There's more. Get the Bulletproof Home Defense Program, and you'll also receive another special report titled Boomer's Guide to Prepping. If you are over 60 years old or have any illness that may affect your mobility, this is for you. Common wisdom says that the elderly are the most vulnerable and at the highest risk in a disaster, mainly because they are often the first to be targeted by intruders. But I'm determined to prove that this is wrong. You'll learn what is the one sentence you should say when you come face to face with a criminal so they will immediately flee with a white face. You'll also find out how to get free hands to help you set up your home defense plan without spending any money. You'll also learn how to have a stockpile of fresh fish and vegetables without buying ready-made MREs, canned food. Developed by North Carolina State University, this strange method allows you to grow your own food in your garden without any watering, fertilizing, or just about any kind of work. Just pick and eat them whenever you want to. Ellie writes, this is like a perpetual supply of survival food. I never knew there was such a way to grow vegetables. This is really survival gardening at its best. And to top it all off, as part of the Bulletproof Home Defense Package, you'll also get an exclusive report named Unlimited Power, 5 Cheap or Free Energy Sources for a Crisis. Electricity is not only expensive, it's also vulnerable to a targeted grid attack or to an EMP. This report will not only help you save money and become more self-sufficient, it will also show you how to keep your freezer and AC running even when a grid is down, without spending a fortune on generators, solar panels, or wind turbine systems, using some alternative power sources that are affordable and sometimes even free. You're getting four special reports for free just for trying the Bulletproof Home Defense Program today. So, here's the deal. There's nothing more valuable than knowing that your family is safe from danger and that no matter if cars are burning in the streets, if hooded thugs are beating helpless old people on a sidewalk, or if your neighbor's white picket fence house is overrun by looters, you and your loved ones are unscathed.
That feeling of complete serenity, the calm of knowing that there are impregnable layers of protection between you and a world gone mad, and that amazing feeling of relief as you see that no one is touching you or your family. That's something that money can't buy. And it's no wonder that some people are spending their life savings, tens of thousands of dollars or more, to ensure that nothing bad will ever happen to their families. They waste $10,000 or more on expensive alarm systems that you won't need. They spend hundreds of thousands on bunkers that you won't have to build. And they fork out thousands more to get professional advice from survivalists who, more often than not, have never seen one minute of real combat let alone experienced what it's like to survive true social chaos. I spent tens of thousands of dollars in research, traveling to war-torn cities just to meet preppers and understand their practical in-the-trenches approach to home defense. And after I got back to the U.S., word got out that I can help people fortify their homes without them having to fork out tens of thousands of dollars. Soon enough, I had hundreds of consulting clients seeking my advice every month. But I wanted these techniques to reach as many patriots as possible and consulting simply takes too much time. That's why I decided to focus my efforts on putting together this ultimate home defense program. Look, the price that my first wave of clients have paid is much higher than most prepping programs that you have likely seen. And the reason is because I reveal things that nobody else reveals. The regular price for the methods taught in the full Bulletproof Home Defense Program is $497, which is what I charge if you were to consult one-on-one -on -one with me, whether it is in person or through the phone. Here's where you benefit. Since the Bulletproof Home Defense Program is a complete home study guide, I don't have to spend extra time with each new student. Basically, that means that I can reduce my overhead fees and pass the savings on to you, while at the same time, you have a reference guide that you can go to even when I'm out of reach. Now, I told you earlier that I'm going to make this affordable for everyone. I'm not going to charge anywhere near $497 for this package. Heck, I won't be charging even half of that at $197. The Bulletproof Home Defense Program is yours for only a one-time payment of just $67, which is almost 90% off the regular price of $497 that I charge my one-on-one -on -one clients. But I want to make this even better for you. Just because you stayed so far into this video shows that you are committed to keep intruders out of your home and protect your family or you wouldn't have listened to this entire presentation. If you order right now, I'm going to give you this newly released additional bonus, the Ultimate Prepping Coach Workbook, just for today. This is for those who are too busy to put hours upon hours into prepping. When you follow the workbook, you'll find yourself making unexpected progress with tiny micro steps that take less than 30 minutes a day. You'll sleep better at night, and you'll discover that your fear and anxiety just vanish, as your home suddenly feels a lot safer when you take the simple yet powerful actions in the workbook. And if information overload is forcing you to procrastinate, this will provide you with a clear A to Z roadmap that you can follow to fortify your home in as little as a month. And to make sure that you have absolutely no excuse not to test drive the Bulletproof Home Defense Program today, I'm going to lower the price even more and give you the entire program plus all the special reports. Crash Proof, How to Survive an Economic Collapse, The Doctor in a Box Special Report, The Boomer's Guide to Prepping, unlimited power, five cheap or free energy sources for a crisis, and the Ultimate Prepping Coach Workbook. Everything I just mentioned for just $37. Only if you order today. Not $67, but you get everything at just $37 now. But you must order from this page by clicking the big button below right now. But really, the price doesn't even matter, because it comes with my no questions asked 60 days money back guarantee. It's simple. Get the Bulletproof Home Defense Package today. If you're not blown away by the strategies I reveal in it, and if you're not absolutely thrilled with the simple, contrarian, budget-saving home defense tactics that virtually no other program covers, then simply send me an email or give me a call within the next 60 days, and I'll send you your money back. When you invest in Bulletproof Home Defense, you will either get amazing, quick results, or you'll get your money back. No fine print, no hassle, no questions asked. So go ahead. Try the Bulletproof Home Defense Program today, risk-free. Just click the big button below. You'll be taken to a secure page that uses state-of-the-art encryption technology to keep your order private, so you can feel safe in ordering today. So, there you have it. In this video, I told you the tragic home defense story of a friend who thought he was protected, only to die like a dog in the street because he made a few lethal prepping mistakes. I also explained how a lucky encounter with an unlikely prepper made me realize that conventional home defense wisdom is plain wrong, and that the only tactics that work 
can be found in the real theaters of modern social chaos. And I showed you how my journey through these modern battlegrounds resulted in the greatest collection of real-life, insanely effective home defense strategies that are already helping thousands of people from war-inflicted countries to defend themselves and their families from looters, burglars, and rapists. But how you choose to use this knowledge is completely up to you. You could do what most Americans do, bury your head in the sand and hope that an economic collapse won't happen. Or that if it does happen, FEMA will protect you. But if their incompetence was proven countless times in small-scale scenarios like Hurricane Katrina or Sandy, what are the odds that they can keep you and your family alive for months in a row or more? No, if you want to survive and thrive, you've got to find a way to do it without leaving everything behind for the taking. But as I've shown you, the conventional way of preparing your home leaves you vulnerable and exposed and forces you to overspend on defenses that won't protect you in a mass social breakdown. The tactics inside the Bulletproof Home Defense Program are proven to work as they underwent the only test that matters, real war. If they worked in places like Egypt, Somalia, or Afghanistan, you can be sure that they will work in the U.S. in the roughest of times. Because in uncommon times, you need a healthy dose of uncommon sense to protect yourself and your family. Just imagine a not-so-distant future, days after the economy tipped over the edge and things just started not working anymore. Everything is a mess. The food trucks are no longer delivering food to grocery stores. The starving crowds are targeting defenseless homes to scavenge whatever they can find. People are being beaten and humiliated by the emerging gangs. No one's answering 911 and the police are nowhere to be seen. Yet you and your family are safe and calm with bulletproof home defense taking care of you. This is the peace of mind you deserve. It's a good feeling to know that you're protected from just about any potentially lethal scenario, and you didn't even have to spend thousands of dollars on your defenses. So go on, click the Add to Cart button below, and I'll wait for you in the Members area with another bonus that's too powerful to mention here. Still here? Let me answer some common questions that other customers have about the program. Is there a lot of information? I feel overwhelmed with all the information out there. The Bulletproof Home Program is a one-stop shop for the most effective home defense strategies that are proven in real disasters. Conventional wisdom may prove deadly because when people become desperate, they'll tear right through these commonly known defenses. Like I said before, I created this manual originally for my family, for Katie, for Hannah, and for anyone else who needs it, and they are in the same boat as you, without any prepping knowledge. I'm a beginner at preparing. Will you hold my hand and take me step by step what to do? Absolutely. When you decide to test drive the system and be my client, rest assured that it will be my number one duty to arm you with everything you need to survive any crisis. In fact, one of my customers, Jane, from Colorado writes, I have never seen such a comprehensive program. It feels like you were in the room with me, giving me one-on-one -on -one guidance. Any questions I have, you have the answers written inside. The writing is clear and easy to understand, too. Marvelous product. What if I don't have a lot of time? Is implementing this program very time-consuming, like so many home defense plans out there? I understand your concern. We all have limited time, especially when some of us have multiple jobs and responsibilities to juggle. This program is different from all the rest out there. You may have to sacrifice a weekend or two to implement the entire plan, but if time is really tight, you can just do the quick action steps in Module 8. This takes less than an hour and keeps out the majority of intruders who want to threaten your home. What if I don't have a lot of money? You don't need a lot of money to implement the plans. I took this into account when creating the manual and challenged myself to come up with alternatives that don't require expensive toys. And these alternatives are more effective than ready-made gadgets. For most people, the implementation cost will be less than $200, which is a bargain. Plus, the money saved by implementing the system in Bulletproof Home will make the program pay for itself on day one. What if I have an apartment? Will this work for me? Yes, this step-by-step -step prepping guide can be used whether you live in a mansion, a shack, an apartment, a teepee, or a suburban home. No matter what, you and your family will be safer because of the Bulletproof Home.